I'd like to start by thanking God Almighty for bringing all of us here, his children, to reflect on how we can contribute in building the world. I also want to thank him for sending the Holy Spirit to be with us here, personally preside at this great event. Uh, just one small correction. I see here former senior minister, and he was only introduced as governor of the Northwest region. <laughs> uh, that is bringing him down to the level of governor only, whereas he is a minister many years and even secretary general of the presidency. That is very dignity and honor. We need a few of this in Cameroon to make Cameroon a better place. I'd like to thank the organizers, particularly Dennis uh, Foundation, Dennis Forretier Foundation, for considering me worthy to live all to live Duala to Yaoundé to present this exchange, I'll call it, I'm not going to give a talk here. Because I tell you one thing, this world has been destroyed by speeches, empty speeches. And uh, I'm not attached to speeches because we listen to speeches every day and they end up hot air. We have nothing from them. When you are Selected to talk about Ecolosis like Mandela, you begin to wonder what you can say about him that people do not know. What can Nico Halley say about Mandela? Most of us here, if not all, if we're interested in events of the world, would have read a long work to, to what freedom. It's a huge book, and uh, if you're an intellectual who has not read that book, then you have read nothing. That book is rich in content, and I recommend it to be read by all of us sitters here. Then we can know that gentleman we are celebrating today, and we continue to celebrate. I'm not going to give you a lecture. As I said earlier on, Lectures are so boring, and, uh, you know, the same thing every day, and nothing is happening. And nothing is happening. Nothing is happening. When Nelson Mandela passed on, more than 100 heads of state were at his funeral. And I want to ask whether up to five of them learned anything when they got there. Because if they did, what we see in Africa, Africa, a very rich nation, continent, the richest continent of all continents. The richest, paradoxically, the poorest. Is it that you and me are not intelligent enough? Or we are not honest enough to build Africa? And we are celebrating a Kurusus today. The question we should ask ourselves when all will be set and done, what can Nico Halle and what have Nico Halle been doing to contribute his own quarter in the building of my society, my communication, my community, my nation? That's a big challenge. Now, when you celebrate an icon, when you celebrate an icon, you should be imbibing some of his core values. If you don't imbibe the core values, then you don't deserve to celebrate. You don't deserve to celebrate at all. The one thing that we all can endorse here is that a man who has spent past spent 
27 years of his life in prison for committing no crime because he wanted justice. He wanted equity. He was fighting against apartheid, discrimination. He wanted transparency and accountability. He wanted peace and love. He wanted patriotism. He wanted the respect for human rights. He wanted integrity, dignity, and honor. That's why you and me are here and celebrating. It's not about how long you live. It's about what you did to impact your society. It's not about how long you live. Yes, you lived for 95 years and so on. Some of us are 100 years and so on. What do you do? What have you done as your own contribution? This is a man who did not work for himself. This is a very, very knowledgeable lawyer, my colleague. <coughs> who said, no, life does not end around me. <coughs> Let me sacrifice my life for others. How many of us here can? Sacrifice your life for others by telling the truth. We lie a lot. As, as, we, as, as in university, there was a subject for life telling in which we specialize so well hypocrisy, falsehood. And then we had as a major subject corruption, embezzlement, looting, and plundering. Africa is on its knees now because we have refused to love each other. The word love is very powerful. Because we love, you get anything flows from love. And that's why I distinguish this gentleman. May his soul rest in perfect peace. And I know this in the bottom of the law, respect by Mandela. Say it again. Celebrate him. Say it again. And he deserves it. Say it again, sir. We go to church on Sundays. The very people who preach the sermon, we sit as Christians after that. What we do has nothing to do with the sermon. And at the end of the sermon, we all clap. <laughs> Hypocrisy. <laughs> and in the end, the same decadence is sorry. Have you had an occasion to meditate and reflect and ask yourself, when all will be set and done, what will be your balance, your balance sheet, the account you are going to give to the Almighty who sent you to this world? I have the impression that he asked himself, Mandela, and he decided to sacrifice his life, his practice for humanity. Now, in a way to calculate, the loss in earnings during the 27 years he was in prison. Loss in earnings. As a lawyer, and you know lawyers are not men of straw. In a way to calculate, my colleague is there, but it's the balance, the He knows that lawyers are not men of straw. What has made lawyers men of straw is the system. <laughs> where there's a crunch in the economy and so lawyers cannot meet their needs anymore. But in South Africa, I know a colleagues of mine have been to South Africa several times and admire that country, that nation. Formidable. My colleague there can pay 10 of us a month because it's well arranged. There's a rule of law which is observed. 
people's rights are respected, there is transparency and accountability. You don't have a civil servant who earns 100,000 francs and you see him building, putting up a structure which costs two, three, four billion and with impunity. Nobody is saying anything about it. Yes. But don't pass the buck. The one in here, the caveat, don't pass the buck. Don't say, why are they not doing this? Why are they not stopping it? Why are you not stopping it? Ask yourself, Nico Hale, uh, why are, what are you doing to stop moral decadence in society? Don't say, what are other people doing? And that's why Mandela took upon himself to fight appetite. Appetite is a bunch of discrimination. There's a lot of sin in appetite. And so he fought it aggressively. And behold, you know, he was finally declared non-existent. Thanks to him. Thanks to his resilience. Thanks to his perseverance. Thanks to his know-how, to intellect, to his intellect. Thanks to his devotedness and commitment for humanity, not for himself. For humanity. Christ came to this world and died for our sins and paid a debt he did not owe. But we only pay our own debts. We have never paid the debts of others. The only way you can pay the debt, the debt of others is by ensuring that while the welfare of others is taken care of, it's not enough that Nico Halley can put foot on his table. Now, Nico Halley, what are you doing other than your sister, your brother? All of you here are my brothers and sisters. When I talk of sister and brother, it's not limited to blood or to affinity or consanguinity or where we come from. I have no, I don't have, I have no time with people who come from, you know, they come from my village, from the same family. All of us are brothers. If we to know that we are all brothers, and that we ought to love each other, and we love ourselves, there will be food on the table for everybody. I assure you. Now, you have a you know, population of about, I'm just kidding, I'm not putting our system in a way, so nobody should be. Support me, you should present, you should present Nico Halley that, oh, he was criticizing this or that. But whether I like or not, take the scenario of a population of 40 million people. So they definitely don't come a rule. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you have only about 200 people living in fact, arrogant opulence. Arrogant opulence. And then a majority are just so desperate, haggard, looking so frail and fragile, dejected and abandoned. <coughs> okay. And you can you can you can you can you can quote some of these situations in many of the countries. Whereas Africa is blessed with huge resources. And I know each of these countries is very well blessed with each resources. But we, you and me, have allowed a few to plunder, pillage, pilfer with impunity. You, you have allowed it. I have allowed it. And so this gentleman said to himself, no, I can't allow this brand of injustice in my country. I will be accountable to God. And for those of us who go to church on Sundays, and those of us who don't even go to church but believe in some almighty, the greatest honor that you and me can have on earth 
is suffering dishonor. Suffering dishonor for the sake of order, for the sake of justice, for the sake of the truth, and for the sake of the Almighty. Otherwise, at the end of this, you know, intercourse that we are having this morning, Charidian women. Charidian women. The same thing. So it continues. And spirals. The same thing every year. Hypocrisy, falsehood. You are expecting if you cannot care for your bed in the morning, and I know Nelson Mandela <coughs> cared for his bed in the morning and swept around his house, you will not be able to function as a chief of service, a director, a director general, or a minister. You start being big by doing those small things so that when you have the opportunity, by God's grace, to be somewhere, you'll be able to do it well. You're able to perform maximum day for the good of the people. And that's why we are celebrating this guy. And I'd like to congratulate the foundation that has made it possible each year on the 18th of July we remember somebody who came to this world and loved his footprints. Somebody who came here and made sure that he turned things around for the good of others and not for his good. And you know exactly when he left prison, he, he, he apologized. He did not apologize. He pardoned all those who had hated him and who hurt him while he was in prison. And this is the heart, this man had the heart. He had the heart of God or Jesus or the, I don't know. I don't know how many of us, after going through the pains of the excruciating pains of the prison, could come out and say, and just say, well, I forgive all of you. I forgive and I ask for reconciliation. And I admire that of him. I admire that of him, this gentleman whose life we are celebrating today. Forgiveness is one of those Christian values that we have not espoused sufficiently. Forgiveness is the underpinning <coughs> of your spirituality. Forgiveness is the whole man, and then unforgiveness destroys you. Because God Almighty forgives us on a daily basis. We don't even ask, and He goes ahead and forgives us. If it were not that, none of us living in this hall would be living. In this hall would be living. Because we are all sinners. I am. I know you are. Unless I know some people say I'm not a sinner, but yeah, those who say I'm not a sinner, I, I, that is hypocrisy. Because you either sin by thought, by word, or by deed. You might sit here like that, sit as you are sitting like that, you are committing sin somewhere by thought. By thought. Yeah. Yes, yes, your mind committing sin. And so we have come short of his glory. And if we do not own up, we are hypocrites. I should be able to know that I am empty. I should be able to know that it is only by his grace and mercy that I can leave Dwala to be wounded without involving myself, getting involved in an accident. And I still get here and I meet my brothers, you and you are here. So it is very important to forgive. I imagine that the peace that this gentleman was crusading is the peace that, is, that emanates from justice. Take away justice, there can't be any peace at all. And that's why when he fought 
for apartheid to be abolished and it was eventually abolished. Woo. You needed to have read the speeches that were made when he passed on to glory. And that's why I'm asking yourselves here and asking all those who went there in their millions to mourn him whether they ever, ever returned with anything. They heard it, it got into one ear, and by the time he left South, South Africa, they had nothing to, to share. Ah, well, I cannot be like him. I cannot be like him. I want to be celebrated. The challenge that we are having, we should be having, asking ourselves a simple question. A legacy, what is a legacy? You, you hand down something. You bequeath something. A legacy is what your track record, positive, that you have handed down to posterity. You are family, your friend, this is community, is living by it, using it as a model to be able to live on and eventually be accountable to the Almighty. Because when all is said and done, I will sit before his throne and I will ask me, Nico Hale, I don't know your name. He will ask you, Senior Minister Boy Machuel, you were in this world for 30 years, 40, 50. Nico Halley, you were there, that boy, and the rest of you sit there. What did you do? Love for your neighbor as yourself. Because the biggest, the greatest commandment in the Bible is love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And the second commandment is love for your neighbor as yourself. Take away love in the world and living is meaningless. <coughs> and if he did not love his people, he would not have forgiven them when he loved Jerry. Ruben Island for 27 years. Woo! <laughs> Nico Halle, can you do that? I'm afraid it's not easy. It's not easy. But, uh, I have learned that I can now pray to God to give me the strength to be able to to die for my brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And that's why and I, when I heard the, the gentleman doctor uh, you, 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 you want this uh, celebration to be within to have at least uh, something to do with what is happening here in Cameroon, in the northern and southwest regions, and of course in the extreme north, where our brothers and sisters, be they police, gendarmes, the army, or the civilian, are killed every day. And there's huge destruction of our wow. The approach here can only be peace. Violence can never be the solution. The approach here can only be peace. But for peace to, to happen, justice must be. Justice and equity. Because there are sort of, some of us who talk peace, 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 just to please people's ears. You can't talk of peace without justice. No way in the world. We have three bottles of tangi to share. And Nico Halle takes two. Because he says uh, he's a grand friend. <laughs> eh? Whether you like it or not, if the other two persons are silent, no, they are boiling. They are boiling. And uh, if that happens once, twice, try to say, please, it shouldn't happen again. They are back on the wall. Why must you take everything, Nico Helen? Why must you? Champagne is not only sweet in your mouth, it's also sweet in our mouth. Let us share God's gift. That is it. That is it. Now, sir, Mr. Foretia, are you a Cameroonian? Yeah, if I were to ask you a question, rhetoric, and coaching, if I were to ask you, it's true, you organize your foundation, 
which uh, for human rights. If I were to how many times have you been on the ground, on the field, to live what the people are living? I'm talking like one who is usually in the north and south. To talk peace, but to talk justice too. I go there. I've been into peace crusading. In fact, if I accepted to be here to talk on this, it's because I've been into peace crusading for 28 years. I am largely responsible for peace that reigns in this nation. And I did elections from 2001 to 2007 in the Northwest. You know what Northwest has been. There was no incident, not one, because I used Mandela's approach. I read much about Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr., Abraham Lincoln. Peace, the strongest weapon in the world. Quote me. Violence is the weakest weapon in the world. Peace is the strongest weapon in the world. And that's what Nelson Mandela used to become great to become known and to succeed. Violence is the weapon of the weak. Peace is the weapon of the powerful. The wise, the intelligent. Take note, the day you slap your wife, you are a weakling. Sure. Well, I don't feel blind. <laughs> uh, you, 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 because violence only comes from one who makes up for his deficiency, moral and intellectual deficiency. So you bring violence. What violence has solved no problem anywhere in the world. I want anybody who is still living on planet Earth to name any place in the world where violence has taken care of a situation, a crisis that has erupted. I challenge you, rather peace, dialogue, consultation, you sit down, you examine yourselves. When Nico Haley is wrong, I say I'm wrong. When I say I'm wrong, it doesn't make me smaller. I'm not diminished. I'm not encapsulated or emasculated. I am uplifted. The moment you say I am sorry when you are wrong, and I do that, each time I discover that I'm wrong, you are greater than you were. Because you have now discovered that you are just a human being. And I remember Nelson Mandela when it was the last few days before he died. What would you want to be remembered for, sir? Mr. President. And this is what he said. I paraphrase. I want to be remembered for as an ordinary human being with all his lapses, shortcomings, imperfections. I want to be remembered for that who is making an effort, and who has made an effort to help build my society. You don't need to be perfect to construct, to help build your society. We are looking for perfect people They are not on planet Earth. There is no perfect person. But we use our imperfections, we admit that we are not perfect, and we ask the Lord to give us the strength to be able to realize to his glory, certain feats. Inordinate and bold ambition, unbridled quest for world power and whatever, those are issues, those are elements that have destroyed society. You, before you want to write, he did not do it that way, to write, you must kill your brother, you must blackmail your brother. You must witch hunt your brother. You must defend him. You must say, that is so much a wash, 
so much around. There's so much spiraling. It's unfortunate that we are in a society where love is in very short supply. In very, very short supply. And this gentleman in whose honor we are here and talking about him, and we'll talk about him till we die, loved himself and loved his people, and above all, loved God. If I have the impression that he is at the bosom of God now, you know, despite the difficulties he faced, the challenges, and the most excruciating, to be in prison, to be deprived of your liberty for one day is so traumatizing, and not to talk of 27 years. So, this foundation, you, 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 you understand that this gentleman, he might never have been a pastor. Because he was not, he was not a lawyer. And we know the names that are given lawyers. Pejorative names. Fortunately, I've never had that kind of name attached to me. Mm -hmm. Not because I'm perfect, but because I do everything not to yield to temptation for yielding sin. Matthew 5, 9. For those of us who read the Bible, the blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. So if you are not a peacemaker, nobody can call you the child of God. We start from there. Peace, peace, peace. You must be a peacemaker. Now, when we wrap up this exchange, this intellectual, I don't can call it intellectual exchange, celebration exchange, what they take home, the take home, the take home should be you challenge yourself and contribute and impact society. You know, I deliberately <coughs> said I was not going to do a speech to write a speech I'm going to read. I don't write speeches. Even when I talk, I give lectures in universities and higher institutions, I don't write speeches. I go and talk. Because integrity also is it, it lacking. And that's where I congratulate your foundation, sir. Because you do not just throw your arms and know what it takes to put together such a foundation, what it costs you. But above all, the resources, you know, uh, in terms of time and whatever, to be able to organize this kind of structure. I want to congratulate you, sir. I have never met you before, but I've met you look a sound gentleman. <laughs> you have wonderful, wonderful ideas. You know, we are, we are living in a world where people say what they do not mean and mean what they do not say. We are living in a world where people have lost all their senses. And uh, the only sense that you have on is wealth. And wealth and position, wealth and power. I don't know what power, what power a man of God needs more than that, which, God, which comes from God himself. You and me, what power, whatever power you and me, well done earth should be to his glory and honor. If the positions you will find here on earth don't please that gentleman up there, then you have better re you have better re reminded yourself, report about your faith. You better rethink what you are offering as the child of God. And I'm very, very uh, I, I request that we all rise up at this point in time to cheer this humanity colossus. We all rise up.
And gives him a standing ovation, even though, so that he can feel it right in his grave. Let us cheer Nelson Mandela.
and they are ready to stay there. And they are ready to stay there. What shall you and me be quick? What shall you and me be quick? In fact, if I accepted to be part of this because I found out, is it a political structure? They said no. I checked with uh, Dennis, he called me in the US, we chatted twice. I said, is there anything politics? Because I belong to no political party and I will never belong. Not because politics is bad, but because the way we play politics. A few of us have destroyed the word politics. Politics is the science of development, of love, of harmony, or evolution. But we've used politics negatively to destroy, to lie, to kill, to steal, to devastate, to, to, to loot and plunder. That's why you will not see me there. I will prefer staying behind and still doing God's work. And that's where I belong. And in the churches and the civil society, I insult nobody. You have a right to your position, because, and I have a right to my position. I insult nobody. No problem with anybody. But I hate people who are hypocritical. When they appoint you into a structure, either a minister or whatever, people are expecting that you should impact and work for the people and not for your stomach. <laughs> and not for your relatives. And not to begin to play looking only at the advantages that accrue from that appointment. You make sure that if you earn 10,000 francs or 100,000 francs, you should be able to deliver. But we, have, we have situations where the first six months or one year is set aside for homecoming, you know, jubilation, and the same money that you use to buy your way off with the same, you want to recover it by, you know, doctoring deals and all of that, and in the end, you have been spending, you spend two, three years, they still are not working. Yeah, so that's why in Africa, I'm talking about Africa, I'm not talking about Cameroon. <laughs> <laughs> so they don't, they don't support me. But they, where, the, where the cap suits you, do what? Eh? For those of you who work, if the cap suits you, you wait. What I'm saying is that. We need, when we leave from here, our mindset, our mentality, if it doesn't change, then it was not necessary coming to celebrate Nelson Mandela. We celebrate a great man, an icon, a hero, somebody who impacted not only South Africa, but the, the world, somebody who is living, not dead, because his works are very much around. That is it. So, Rhapsody, Rhapsody, you are jubilating that you are part of this, but what did you take from him? Instead of paranoia, relax yourself. Talking about academics, there are people in this nation who did not go to university, but who have contributed enormously to the growth of this nation. And there are people who have a million degrees, 10 PhDs, whether you call what, who have helped bring down Africa and bring down the world. You're hearing that doctor, professor. <laughs> when it comes to half time, deliver. He cannot deliver. He's delivering into his stomach. That's all. Delivering into his stomach. Yeah. And then he is not, it is insensitive what is happening somewhere. Yeah. Somebody is dying here, it is not his problem. People are being, it is not his problem. You tell you that you can go and die, die, I'm drinking my, my beer. <laughs> That's where we find ourselves. And that's the level of decadence that we have. And we should honor. We should honor. The few days that God has given you and me, we should be able to die for others. 
the enemy will die for your husband, for your wife, for your child, for your neighbor, for your community, for your society, for your nation. But for that to happen, you must love and you must stand for the truth. Tell the truth at all times, even if your head is going to be cut. Tell the truth at all times. There are people who don't talk. They talk behind. You get into a situation, instead of expressing your opinion, which will help feel, you shy away. And then after the meeting, that's when you start saying, oh, this guy is not, this is, you cannot talk bad. We read a document, I read a document which remains a major document that was published by the minister. A boy my choice, which is classic. Some of us have read it, and it means nothing. The chien a boire, la carbone passe. I asked the minister, disseminate that document, give it the widest publicity. If that document were ever sent around, we would not be where we are today, Mr. Minister. I say it up, I'm not hiding it behind. I don't say it, I flatter nobody because I crave for no indulgences. But the truth is always the truth. And lies remain lies. The people who lie look for their lies to justify lies and spirals. Yes. And uh, you see, because uh, you see people who get into politics, they, they maneuvering people, trying to get people, blah, blah, blah. blah. The people are making fast, brisk money during the crisis, sharing blood money. Blood money. If there's a crisis and you take advantage, instead of seeing how you can resolve it, you can bring peace, you're making fast money and using it as a political you know, platform to position yourself, you are a failure to you rethink yourself. And that's why this gentleman is very important to celebrate it. Because all of those core values, all of those moral, spiritual core values, we could see them in Nelson Mandela. He was definitely not a perfect person, just like Mahatma Gandhi. He was definitely not perfect, not even Abraham Lincoln or Martin Luther King. But they used their imperfections, they, used, they were like platforms for them to do something for their people. And so you and me are not perfect, but I challenge you, let us make sure that we do something good for our people. May God bless you. Thank you. Again, what is Barista Nico Halle doing to bring peace to Cameroon? I've been doing that for years. <laughs> <laughs> we at the Foundation acknowledge the fact that you have been doing a lot. We acknowledge your relentless effort and your quest for peace and justice in our nation. It is in line with that that we present to you this certificate of recognition. Wow. Yeah. 